Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here with you for this week's Capitalist Venture. Capitalist Venture, you monster. We are here with a book haul. This is a book haul. This is a staple, important piece of book tube. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, you can get familiar with other books, but it's capitalist ploy. You know, people do library book hauls. We That's should true. invest in that. Yeah. We should. But anyway, what do you got? This is um, yours. I have a lot of books that you're not going to like. That sounds about right. Starting with Utilitarianism by John Stuart Mill. <clears throat> now, I have decided <clears throat> that maybe to uh, set us apart a little bit from other book hauls. Okay. I have excerpts that I think will... Uh, Will appease the curiosity of what these books are. Well, look at you go. All right, what do you got? General Remarks, Chapter 1. There are few circumstances among those which make up the present condition of human knowledge more unlike what might have been expected or more significant of the backward state in which speculation on the most important subjects still lingers than the, than the little progress which has been made in the decision of the controversy respecting the criterion of what is right and what is wrong. From the dawn of philosophy, the question concerning the summum bonum, or what is the same thing, concerning the foundation of morality has been accounted the main problem in speculative thought, has occupied the most gifted intellects, and divided them into sects and schools, carrying on a vigorous warfare against one another. And after more than 2,000 years, the same discussions continue. Philo d continue. Philosophers are still ranged under the same contending banners, and neither thinkers nor mankind at large seem nearer to being unanimous on the subject than when the youth Socrates listened to the old Protagoras and asserted, if Plato's dialogue be grounded on real conversation, the theory of utilitarianism against the popular morality of the so-called sophist. I want you to know <clears throat> that opposite of sitting here and being like, this is a great book and I bought it because people like it, everyone watching just click, just completely zoned out. But I'm good for you. Good for you for heavy philosophy. Did I tell you that I considered being a philosophy major at one point? No, you did not. So this is right up my alley. I love things like this. I took a handful of philosophy classes. It was right next to my theater degree where I'm like, I can't work with this. I have to make a living. So, hmm. I am I am taken aback. Really? Yeah. Uh, no, I, after Dogs of Babel, I think <laughs> this would be the exact monster. opposite of whatever it is uh, you no, enjoy. No, I, uh, oh my. I, so, Utilitarianism, John Stuart Mill. That is a Barnes & Noble collection. Strategy, 50 Thinkers. Um, the Art and Science of Strategy, Creation, and Execution. These are things I am always interested in the strategy of life. Okay. Uh, I am always interested in what it is that makes people tick and why it is wrong and how a better way might be. So the first page, chapter one, how we got here. Everyone in business is eager, sometimes desperate, to find an edge, a way to outmaneuver his or her rivals and secure sustainable long-term profits. This is where strategy comes in. A strategy is a plan or pattern of actions that organizes activities of a firm to meet its objectives. In doing so, strategy takes the resources of a firm and the external environment it operates in into account. In the case of a company, the overall strategic objective is primarily to attain a competitive advantage, the more long-term, the better. So I think that one of the things that I'm always interested in as a writer is to take texts which are meant for other things, in this case, business management, and interpret them into a writer's life. Okay. And I'll be starting a series on here. It'll be solo videos about that very thing. And uh, I am very eager to get into this. It says 50... 50 thinkers, um, the world's leading business minds on today's most critical challenges. Uh, now, this reminds me of a book that I think you would enjoy. Uh, again, I'm going to attempt to stretch my you know, space here of what you think about me. Have you ever read Blink by Malcolm Gladwell? No. Uh, it, it, I, I believe the preface is it's the power of thinking 
without thinking. Right. It's how people tick, how you know you can associate gut feelings with things and things like that. And it just reminded me along that. They usually put it in the business section uh, because it's a people reading book. So, oh, okay, okay. Just something that you know, came across. Along those radar. lines, my final book, which I am most excited about, has something to do with that. Okay. Uh, Dao De Ching by Lao Tzu. You said it right. I'm so proud of you. Look at you, you monster. I actually, I'm fairly interested in a lot of uh, Eastern influences on literature and philosophy. Where have you been all my life? What? I mean, do, do you want to like, sir, should we read the Conference of the Birds or something? Uh... Sure. I, I read uh, The Art of War just last year. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, actually, there is one that I've always considered picking up, but I've never read it. It's the uh, uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Have you heard that one? I have heard of it. Uh, that does not sound compelling well, to me. What? Yeah, that, maybe we can read it from oh, wait, well, I'm just Yeah, sure. We've learned something about each other, so carry on, carry I, on, I, carry on. What, where do you think my morbid curiosity with haiku comes from? I just assumed it was a Fight Club thing, No, honestly. it goes way before Fight Club. Excuse me. Uh, one does not simply hijack a major corporation's reader board next to a highway in order to haiku for Fight Club. Come on, that is a it's Fight pretty, Club esque it's situation. Very project mayhem. It is, but give me some credit. <laughs> all right. Um, I've done also. In fact, Ezra Pound, I, I will off camera. We'll talk about this. I'm fairly positive. I figured out who Ezra Pound stole his whole game from. Really? Oh yes. Oh my. It was a haiku. Haiku guy. Haikuist. Haikuist. I can't remember who it was right now. Anyway, I've got I'll, it written down. Lay me on some uh, down to shake. All right. Thirty three. If you understand others, you are smart. If you understand yourself, you are illuminated. If you overcome others, you are powerful. If you overcome yourself, you have strength. If you know how to be satisfied, you are rich. If you can act with vigor, you have a will. If you don't lose your objectives, you can be long-lasting. If you die without loss, you are eternal. That's a very fight club. That's beautiful. Um, and... It's one of the, I'm, I've always identified as an atheist. I'm not a spiritual person. But Eastern spirituality, Buddhism, things like that, holds a little place in my heart. because I, I like things like that. So I, I don't know if maybe I just they, uh, read into it too much. or But that is wonderful. And Lao Tzu is one of the big ones. I mean, that's, oh, that's yeah. a fine pick. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that there is an interconnectedness to everything that exists because it exists, right? Which is a Buddhist thought. Right. Uh, but that gets away from atheist thought, which I tend to identify more with. But I, I don't know. It's the difference between religion and spirituality, I think. Well, I think you're talking about the difference between religion and woo-woo as well. Uh, that's, that's an atheistic term, woo-woo, where, uh, oh boy, I can't remember his name right now, but there's a, there's a guy who... He just publishes anything he thinks sounds good and people love it. And it's just woo woo. It's we're all interconnected in the fact that we're conscious and the whole universe has a consciousness. And it's no, it doesn't. The universe does not have a consciousness. But I think the fact that everything exists is a relatedness. Fair enough, right? Um, well, you just went to town in the philosophy section, didn't you? I did. You? It's been a long time. And that's, that's a great thing, is to get away from literature and read some heavy stuff now and then. Well, I think it's necessary to literature. Well, in order to talk about literature, you got to know what you're talking about. In order to write literature, you got to be able to, to write something. I feel very underread all of a sudden, because I've been focusing nothing but novels lately. Yeah, it's been, it's been rough. So I, I feel this is refreshing. Thank yeah. you. This is by no means an awful book haul. Existentialism is a humanism by John Paul Sartre. Existentialism. Lay it on um, me. Now, <clears throat> existentialist, car well, I'll, I'll read that part. But another thing that I am uh, interested in in this is that it includes a commentary on The Stranger by Albert Camus. And I've not read that? I haven't either. So I'll have to read that before I get to this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me read the first paragraph of the preface to the 1996 French edition by Arlette Elkame Sartre. I butchered that, I'm sure. Yes, you did. How do you say it? I'd assume Arlette Elkame Sartre. That's Sartre. Is that Sartre? Sartre. Jean-Paul Sartre. You've heard of Sartre? You've never heard of Sartre? No. Okay, well, first paragraph. 
Existentialism is a humanism is a stenographer's transcript originally written in shorthand and scarcely altered by Sartre of a lecture he gave in Paris on Monday, October 29, 1945. He was invited to speak by the Club Maintenant, which was founded during the liberation of Jacques Calme and Marc Beigbeder to promote literary and intellectual discussion. The text of the, liter of the lecture was published the following year by Editions Nagel. Why, why was the author of Being and Nothingness, 1943, so determined to convince people of the humanistic nature of his doctrine? And that's setting the road that there is there are problems. This um, from existentialism is a humanism. My purpose here is to defend existentialism against some charges that have been brought against it. First, it has been blamed for encouraging people to remain in a state of quietism and despair. For if all solutions are barred, we have to regard any action in this world as futile. And so at last we arrive at a contemplative philosophy. And inasmuch as, contemplative is, as contemplation is a luxury, we are only espousing to yet another kind of bourgeois philosophy. These are the main reproaches made by the communists. Others have condemned us for emphasizing what is despicable about humanity, for exposing all the world, for exposing all that is sordid, suspicious, or base, while ignoring beauty and the brighter side of human nature. For example, according to Miss Mercier, a Catholic critic, we have forgotten the innocence of a child's smile. Basically, Sartre came along and said, this whole reality thing, this is kind of how I see it. And everybody said, oh, there's no point. <laughs> oh. Mass suicide. So uh, he's basically defending his own philosophy. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it's pretty powerful stuff from what I understand. And you know, that's a, that's a big point in religion and philosophy if... I, this is going to a lot of Eastern religion, especially uh, yeah, Hinduism, things like that. If this is your suffering, why don't you just kill yourself? Yeah. And the world is suffering, right? Exactly. And remember, kids, suicide is the only decision that you will never live to regret. <laughs> we are going to get so many <laughs> negative reviews now. Well done, philosophy. So, well, free will. If that wasn't going to get us negative reviews, free will by Sam Harris definitely will. Uh, free will is about the illusion that is free will. Um, this from Harris. The, physio the physiologist Benjamin LeBay famously used EEG to show that the activity in the brain's motor cortex can be detected some 300 milliseconds before a person feels that he has decided to move. Another lab extended this work using functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI. Subjects were asked to press one of the two buttons while watching a clock composed of a random sequence of letters appearing on a screen. They reported which letter was visible at the moment they decided to press the button or one button or the other. The experimenters found two brain regions and contain, and that contain information about which button pressed would be pressed a full seven to 10 seconds before the decision was consciously made. More recently, direct recordings from the cortex showed that the activity of a mere 256 neurons was sufficient to predict with 80% accuracy a person's decision to move 700 milliseconds before he or she became aware of it. These findings are difficult to reconcile with the sense that we are conscious authors of our actions. One fact now, se now seems indisputable. Some moments before you are aware of what you will do next, a time in which you are subjectively a time in which you subjectively appear to have complete freedom to behave however you please, your brain has already determined what you will do. You then become conscious of this decision and believe that you are in the process of making it. Isn't that terrifying? Look at that. Mr. Philosophy himself this week. Actually, that was delightfully refreshing. And I could see myself purchasing all of those. Uh, so thank you. Okay. I guarantee you this will not be a very popular book haul. Oh, absolutely not. It's, but It's dry. It is dry. But that's the thing. In order to, if you can get through this and read it and comprehend a snippet of it and utilize that in discussing literature, you have made it. That is what literary discussion is about. I think so. 
uh, it, it's it's so hard to discuss anything without, I mean, without a broader palette with which to paint. Exactly, and this is necessary. It's necessary reading. And honestly, if you just sit down, let's say you're going out with somebody, making a first impression, if you just sit down and start talking about existentialism, if they have a right mind, you just, you got a lot of points on your side and all of not, a sudden. you lost them. And if not, you don't want to associate right. yourself with them. So you've won. So bravo, sir. Well done. Well, thank you. Uh, let me know uh, down in the comments below if you have any thoughts on Adrian's High Philosophy Week and uh, what we should be reading next. I'm sure we'd be interested, especially in this genre. Which of these books do you think you would be most prone to buying? Which one do you think you would be most prone to setting on fire? <laughs> and if you want to hear us attempt to apply these to young adult literature, <laughs> hit that subscribe button. We'll be back every day of the week. Find us on Twitter at Strip Cover and on Facebook at Strip Cover Lit.